In today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to design a simple festival flyer. So hey guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and you can find me on Facebook at Rita Pro. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to design a simple festival flyer. We're going to work with some canvas sizes, some text and some frames, some backgrounds and yeah, bundle it all together for a simple flyer design. Great, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so over in Photoshop, you guys can see that I again have a new design for you guys. I'm gonna actually quickly switch all of my groups off. So first again, we're gonna work a little bit on the background here, then add some text, and then on top of that, some lines here. And then I've added just some contrast because I wasn't too happy with the color, but we're gonna do the color right away. Okay, great. So first of all, what I wanna do now is go to File, New and open a complete new canvas because this is going to be for a festival flyer. So again, I need to have a different size. So for the tutorial purposes, I'm going to go with international paper and A4. So you guys can see everything nice and big on the screen. But if you design this, please be sure that you will have a different setting for your canvas size. So your height and width here will be different. Just note that, please. Okay, I'm going to go with A4 with F out of the full screen mode. So here's my flyer so far, background layer is going to be uh, uh, unlocked or locked still, so double click on that, and I'm just going to say here, white background, right, so that's my first layer, okay, and then next step that I'm going to do now is obviously move in my background image, so for that I do have a background image over here, as you guys can see, a shot of the nature, if you want this background, have a look in the description down below, you can download this out of the media package as well. Okay, I'm going to drag this right away over into this new canvas over here and going to rename this also to background. So that is my background image. Okay, and I'm going to hit F again, full screen mode, and we can start editing on that. So first of all, what I'm going to do is just position here the mountain a little bit better. And this mountain will go somewhere down here. Okay, with Z, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And now I'm going to press Command T, so Command and T on the keyboard in order to get into the transform mode. <clears throat> now, if you are a Windows person, please press control when I say command. Okay, I'm gonna hold shift on the keyboard and select an anchor point here, and just to equally expand this a little bit. Okay, move it again down here, and I want to also expand it down a little bit more, so I have a bit more mountain. Okay, like so, going to accept it, take the move tool, and literally also with my cursors up and down, moving this into the right position. Great, so that's roughly where I want to have this. Now I want to cut out just the mountain from the background. So there's actually a few ways how to do this. You can do it either with the magic wand tool or again also with the pen tool. I'm gonna to do it with the magic wand tool, which is here on the left hand side, just because it's quicker for the tutorial. Normally I would take the pen tool to cut this out because the edges will just look way, way nicer. Okay, if you also don't know how to work with the pen tool, have a look on the channel as a 101 Photoshop playlist for beginners where you can learn how to work with this. Great, so I'm going to take the magic wand tool over here. On my background image, I'm going to select just the background, so the clouds, and hold now shift on the keyboard to go into the add mode. So I can select more areas here with the magic wand tool. Great, so selected all of the top part. Now what I'm going to do is go over to the background image over here, the layer, and going to hit the mask. It will most probably give me an inverted mask. Yep, so once I hit the mask, you can see everything that is white will be shown, everything that is black will be hidden. So we're going to invert that with just Command E. Okay, invert that, you guys can see here in the top, and over here, and over here, it looks almost like snow, we don't have a proper cutout from the layer. Okay, so you can either now hit right click on this layer and go into Refine Mask. And just with Refine Mask on white here, you can just go over here and tell Photoshop, please have another look just at these little areas here and cut them out a little bit nicer for me. Okay, as you guys can see, it's currently rendering. And that came out a little bit better. So I don't want to sh show this the whole way. I have another channel called Rita Pro Channel where I talk a lot about photography stuff and you guys can learn more about these techniques under advanced masking. Okay, so I'm gonna just roughly do that, hit okay, 
and kind of have my mountain cut out in a little bit of a nicer way. It's a little bit brighter here. You can still go in with the brush and obviously with black foreground color, paint this a little bit back again with a soft feathered brush. But if you want to learn more about that, have a look on my bigger channel where I teach more about photography and Photoshop stuff. Okay, great. So we have that. Next step that we want to do is again work with some text layers. So I'm going to go over to the text tool, make a nice big selection here. And first of all, going to name right now the name of the festival, which is called Aroma. Okay, this is all just made up. Uh, there's not a certain thing that is called like that. Great. So I'm going to select the color over here, which is white currently, color picker. And I'm going to go down here and select somehow a little bit of a grayish, dark grayish area here from the mountains. Great. I'm going to accept that. Okay. Say OK over here. And first of all, I'm going to switch this now to bold and going to work with a font called Helvetica Neue. You guys can also find that again down below in the description. And yeah, you can find that there. Then let's head over to the character box here. And I'm going to switch my tracking back to zero. If you guys don't have the character box, please have a look under window. Character, you have to find a little tick button here. Okay, great. Next step, I'm going to make it nice and big. Okay, so it stands out really nicely. Aroma, there we go. Okay, now I can accept, accept this. And just with the move tool, move this down a bit. I think I'm going to make it actually a little bit smaller though, because we still want to add in our lines here. Again, our frame. I'm going to actually take the move tool, go over to my ruler here and just drag down some guidelines. So over here and here, I want to have my frame. So maybe the aroma needs to be a little bit smaller though. Okay, like so. Let's make it like this. Aroma accepted and with the move tool, just a bit into the center. Now, to make it a bit easier, I'm going to press Command J on the keyboard in order to duplicate this text layer. Move this a little bit down, press T on the keyboard again. And first of all, going to write now what type of festival this is or slogan again, if you want to make a logo out of this. Okay, and it's called a electronic music uh, festival. Okay, I'm going to select everything. Make this nice and small. Let's have a look at my spelling. Okay, and also select everything. And first of all, from bold, I'm going to change this to regular. So it's just standing out a little bit and not that prominent as the Roman name. I'm also going to make it a bit smaller. Just remember, you have to have it as a size that you can still read it later on your fly. So don't make it too small. Okay, like I want to go with 25 actually. And my tracking here all the way up until we reach the ends of the A's. Okay, accept it and move tool, place that again somewhere over here. Again, remember you guys can also use guidelines in order to space this a bit better. Okay, again, Command J, duplicate this once more. I'll put it right underneath and just rename this as well to wherever this will be. So this will be in the petrol club at the 26th. This is all just made up, so no certain names there. Okay, 2016. Now I'm going to select all of it and also maybe first of all I'm going to just leave it at that size and move that a bit into the center. So you kind of have like a V shape going on. Everything is centered nicely with the text. Or again if you want to you can now select it. I'm actually going to leave it like that. But you can select it again with the text tool and just put the tracking all the way up so that it fits in with electronic music if you want to have everything in a nice square here. Okay, maybe with the move tool a little bit up. Great, that's basically it. Now, for the next step, I'm going to select all of my text layers here, just holding command on the keyboard. And I'm also going to press command G, put this together in a group, call this text. And then as well, the bottom parts here, also again for background. Okay, rename that. And we're going to fix this quickly. Okay, so it's nice and sorted. So when you download this PSD file, it will also be nice and sorted. Uh, the PSD file is also available in my Udemy course. Okay, then as well, on top of that, we wanted to obviously add now a new uh, frame. For that, you can either work here with guidelines and try to be very specific where you put your guidelines and calculate them. I'm just going to drop them really quickly in, like you guys can see. 
and with the marking tool making one big frame here. Now I'm going to create a new layer icon here. Sorry, just a new layer from the new layer icon. And inside of this marking selection here with the marking tool, I'm going to hit right click and say fill. I'm going to fill this with white foreground color and press command D in order to get out of the selection again. Now I will go back in again with the marking tool and also select the rectangular marking tool and just try to make a selection again inside here until to the corners. Again, remember, use some guidelines when you do this. I'm doing this just a bit quicker. Okay, like so. Yep, need to do that again. And all the way up to the corner and trying to just work here with my marking tool. There. Okay, let's try this one more time. Okay, the marking tool also wants to clip again to my guidelines. Okay, like so. And now inside of that selection, I'm just going to hit delete again. All right, so command D, get out of the selection, and you guys can't see it right, now, right away, but we have a white frame now. Okay, so what we can do now is rename this to frame, and I'm also going to make a duplicate of that. So first of all, view, clear the guides. Okay, and now with command J, duplicate this, and I'm rename this to two, and this will be one. Now, let's open the background again, all the way, and I'm just going to select the background picture. I'm going to select the magic one tool like before, and select just the background again. Hold shift on the keyboard, select everything, okay, and the mountain is still cut out nicely. So I'm going to turn off layer two and layer one. So first of all, on layer one, yes, I want to delete the top part. So delete that, just hit delete once. You guys can also turn this off to see if it deleted, yes. Okay, and now I want to invert this. So on layer two, if I'm going to switch this on again, you guys can see that it will delete this area, which we don't want. So select the marking tool, inside of the selection hit right click, and say select inverse. Now only the mountain will be selected. And now remember on layer two, you hit delete. Great, so now you have the frame at the top, and you've got the frame at the bottom but on separate layers again with our selection over here. Great, so now that you've got that, you can press Command D, put on the white layer again, put on the text layer again, and first of all, we're gonna leave white down here because it matches nicely with the background, but the top part, we want to give that a brown and a very dark gray color. So layer two, double click on that, get into the layer styles, and under the layer styles and color overlay, you guys can already see what's happening, we're going to select the right color. So on the right hand side here, just select the color picker and select the same color as the font. Hit OK and OK over here and right away you guys can see that we have a frame now on top of that. So lastly, just the spacing here and the grouping. So the frame, Command G, I'm going to write here frame. And then as well the text, I'm just going to press Command T now and going to hold Shift, select an anchor point and evenly going to make the aroma whole text a bit smaller so it just looks a bit better here on the sides. Okay, yeah, guys, that's basically it. how to design a super easy festival flyer in Photoshop. Again, remember to play a little bit more with your guidelines and be a bit more precise with the guidelines as well so your design looks perfect. Okay, that's basically it. If you like this episode, don't forget to hit me up with a thumbs up, share this with all your buddies who are new to design, and don't forget to subscribe. So thanks again, guys, for watching. I'll catch you all in the next tutorial. Yes, and you are still watching because you are interested in some more tutorials. Yep, then wait no longer. Here on the right hand side at the top is again what happened last week on the channel and at the bottom some beginner and advanced stuff. So yeah, your choice, click away last week or again some more from the channel. Your choice. Okay guys, enough of me. See you in the next tutorial.